There are tons of reviews on the Slow and Sear Deluxe, so I don't know what made you click on this video, but we're happy that you're here because we are sharing our true, honest opinion about this product, and then maybe at the end of this video, you'll decide if it's right for you. All right, so here's me taking it off my truck. It's a pretty big box. I'm cold just looking at you. That was actually a nice day. So I'm seeing you're pulling out the instructions. It doesn't look like you're doing a deep dive into the instructions. No. I glanced at them, but then I did revisit them later because I wanted to give this an honest review. So I wanted to make sure I was using it correctly. I've never used anything like this before. Here's what the Slow and Sear Deluxe looks like. It's got that basket part and then it has this long heavy channel that you'll see in the middle that goes right snug against that one side. And that fits right into like the regular standard kettle. It does, that's what I loved about it. I had this kettle Old already. Snug. I didn't have to buy a new grill for it. I could just put it in my kettle. That channel, the whole thing is really, really heavy. It's very heavy metal. And that's it, that's installation. Then it says get a lighter cube, put it in a corner and light it. It was really cold and windy out this day, so I was, you could see I'm struggling. <laughs> My hands are freezing <laughs> trying to light it. So, okay, do not do this. But you gotta get yourself one of those light, those no. like fireplace lighters. I don't like those. Those this are is weird. old school. That, yeah, that is pure old school. Okay, so then this is me throwing charcoal at it to try to keep, to get it lit. It says specifically in the instructions, put 12 pieces on right now. So you don't need a chimney? You don't need a chimney to get it going. It says add 12 unlit pieces onto the onto the um, chimney starter right now. So you can see me counting. I just trying to actually give it 12. So I'm trying to do what the instructions say to what give brand? it an honest review. Kingsford, we talking Weber, what charcoal here? These are Weber. I figured we'd go with a the theme because it's a kettle. All right. We're using a kettle. So I'm adding the 12 to the corner. While those light, I'm headed to the kitchen to prep what we're gonna be making on the grill to test the um, s, s Deluxe. This is a giant tomahawk, as you can see. Beautiful. Oh, she's, thick. she's thick, she's happy. Look at my face, I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> All this needs is just a little bit of rub, keep it nice and super simple. But I thought this would be the perfect thing to test this out because it's slow and sear. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna do a reverse sear on this, hence the slow part, then at the very end, we're gonna see if it sears. So we're seeing if it if it can cook low and slow, and it also if it can sear. So slow and sear. Yeah, I'm I trying got, to. Yeah. I wanted to give it the full test. All right. Okay, wait. So you are using a chimney. Okay. So, but if you'll notice, I'm using a chimney. But it says now fill in the remaining channel here with un an unlit chimney. It said use the chimney as a guide to show you how much you need. So that's so basically then that's a full chimney of product mm -hmm. without the chimney. It's just you're just using it like a measuring cup basically. I'm taking a picture of just plain water and it adding it to the channel like it says. So that's your water pan. Instead of having to bring out a pan, it's all wobbly and whatnot. Yes. Your pan's built into the grill. Exactly right. It says that it's supposed to help stabilize the temperature and add moisture during long, slow cooks. It specifically cool. says do not use the channel for high cook for high temperature cooks though. It said it can alter the, t it can, let me just double check here. Okay, so now we're reading the instructions. Okay, we have to give this a very honest review, so I didn't want to do anything wrong and be like, it didn't work for that. Well, True. I screwed it up. So it specifically says, for low and slow cook steam generated from the reservoir helps to stabilize temperatures and add humidity. And it says, do not use water for indirect cooking above 300 degrees. Using water for temperatures above 300 will impede your ability to reach high heat temperatures. I agree with that. Because water will absorb some of the heat generated yes. by the coals. I did really like this grate. Whenever we're cooking with the kettle, there are, you can get a hinged grill grate, but it's so thin and it, you're always like trying to put wood in there. The wood can never fit unless you're using chips. Yeah. So I like that that's basically two thirds of the grill, mm -hmm. I'd say, like size wise. It's the exact size of the Slow and Sear Deluxe. Genius. So it hinges right open. I found it to be very user friendly. It hinges right open so you can add more charcoal if you need to. I thought this was a very slick design. In the instructions, it says, now is the time to add wood chunks if you so choose. And when I get an opportunity to add wood, she I'm so take chooses. It. So we've got some chunks of cherry here that are going in. Ooh. They say just nestle them down into the coals. So that's what I'm gonna do. Shut that hatch there. Now we're cooking. Okay, so then now you're get the lid down, let it come up to temp here. Yep, we've got it at 225. I did notice with the water channel, it did hold the temperature extremely well for a long period of time. And now we're gonna go ahead and get our tomahawk on. So I just got it obviously over the, the indirect side, so over the cool side, nowhere near those coals, because the cool, this is low and slow since mm -hmm. we're doing the reverse here, so it's well, well off to the side. Now I found this to be very interesting because 
since the coals are contained in that one basket, it's very, it's unlike low and slow cooking in any other way. So you're not setting up your grill like using the snake method where it's gonna sort of slowly but go around. But it is around. like this, I was gonna say it is like the snake method because it's not going around the grill, it's staying to that side of the grill, but it's like slowly, there's lit charcoal, then that lights the charcoal over here and so on and so that's exactly the snake method, but just in that little area. Yes, I think it's cool because it's perfect for low and slow because it is slowly snaking its way back, but you have the ability to sear on it. The yes, snake method. Right. So if you do the snake method for It's a, like a tiny little like row of charcoal. And it's just low. Side. Yeah. And you can't sear anything on there. You're like, oh, it's something's just low and slow. If you're doing like a pork shoulder. Okay, I already like it. It's a pork shoulder, it's low and slow. Bob's your uncle, who cares? But for something like this where it's low, but then you need to sear. That's let's... what it was probably built for. I'm getting it now. Slow and sear. Yes. I, I was got like, it, yeah. oh, okay, here's where we're going. Were you going for medium rare? I was going for medium rare. So medium rare is 120 when you're reverse searing, and then you want to get it to 130, 135 when you're throwing it down on that sear. That thermometer tells you, you just set it to medium rare. You don't have to memorize the times. Oh, cool. You just put medium rare. You can even switch it to chicken or pork or whatever. What and is then, that? I, I don't even know. Okay, we get I don't know where we got it. it. <laughs> but it's cool, and then you just put it yeah, in. Why do you have, I don't have that one. I think someone sent it to us. I don't have it. Well, it's cool. Okay, so now we're ready for the sear part. So all I did to get ready for sear, I didn't know if you needed to do this. I think that the coals were hot enough in that one corner as it is. But to me, in my brain, I was like, I'm gonna just open up the dampers a little bit. Yes. Get a little more air Genius. going in there. Because I was done. At this point, I was like, I don't need to go slow anymore. I can get that charcoal really hot and fiery. It oh, was a yeah. very high heat. I initially thought these were gonna be like essentially a glorified charcoal basket. <laughs> That's what I, when I first heard of them too, I'm like, okay, but it's a charcoal basket. I was like, who cares? But it's not. This, I did really like this, this part about it. It was extremely high heat in order to sear that. So to go from low and slow to hot and fast, I was astounded. Oh yeah, that sizzly action. Yeah. Now I don't know how I can go back to using anything else when you're, if you need to do something like a reverse sear. How long into the cook do you think that was? Do you think that basket is enough to like set it, forget it, brisket, like mm -hmm. a 10 hour brisket? You might have to add it, you might have to add a little bit for a 10 hour brisket, but it was going well into six hours without me having to do anything. And that was even after I turned it up to high. So for ribs, you're there then. Mm -hmm, definitely. Brisket, you always gotta like tamper a little bit with the grill anyway, whether you're using a charcoal grill. But um, I think that's like, there. other than like a pellet grill, if you're charcoal grilling, you're gonna have to like mess around a little bit regardless if you're making a brisket. So I don't know about you guys, but I hate wasting fuel. If I close that lid and it still is at a decent temperature, I'm looking in my kitchen and figuring out what I can put on there. A hundred percent. I'm like, I do I got some pepper? Do I have some sweet peppers? Do I wanna do some caramelized onions? In this case, for dinner, I wanted some squash. So I was like, you know what? This grill was still firing away. It had d plenty of life left in it. I thought I'm gonna cut open a squash and I'm gonna put it on a tray and just let it do its thing. Okay, but like I mentioned earlier, since I had it on high, it specifically in the instruction manual said, do not use the water channel on high. Squash took so much longer because the, there was water in there and it wasn't holding temperature as well. I like that you can remove the water channel entirely though. You I should have done that. You don't need to put that in there and I think that's cool because if you were uh, making a brisket, some people like a water pan, some people don't. So I like that the option's there if you want mm -hmm. it. If you don't want it, just take it out and then there's more room for the charcoal. It was incredibly juicy. More juicy definitely than I would say had we not used that water channel. See? That it was ridiculously that juicy. That does do stuff. I noticed right off the bat, I was like, wow, this is incredibly juicy. Beautiful smoke ring. Incredibly user friendly too. Oh goodness, oh goodness, Look at yes. how good, it was so juicy. It was so tender too. As I was cutting it, it was slicing, because of the water added so much moisture to it, the meat itself was so ridiculously tender. Ooh. Like look at, you can see that one side, as I'm cutting, it was like pushing the meat forward. It was so tender. See, that's what you, nothing's worse than like a dry steak. Yes. I didn't think it could get any easier. Look at the smoke ring. Yeah. Beautiful. Now, would you use the SNS Slow and Sear Deluxe again? A hundred percent. Do you think it's worth it? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Just, I haven't tested it yet, but just looking at this footage, I can't wait to get my hands on it. Yeah. And I am getting my hands on it. I don't think that that's just for you. No, I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's at the girl's studio now. It might have to stay there. 
but I definitely would use it again. I would definitely recommend it to other people. I would say it's one of those tools that you will dig out again and again anytime you are doing something slow, low and slow. Now we do hope that that helped you answer any questions that you had about the Slow and Sear Deluxe. If you have more questions, leave them in the comments below. And if you want to know where you can get the Slow and Sear Deluxe, check out the description box for a link that'll bring you right over to the website so you can get one for yourself. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that thumbs up button and we will see you in the next video.